everyone. Welcome to At Home with Sally. I'm Sally Clarkson, and I have the biggest privilege in the world to be with so many friends from all over the world who join me every week to listen to my stories, inspiration, biblical encouragement, and I am just so glad that you're here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, my friends. This is Sally Clarkson at Home with Sally, and I am in my home on my couch surrounded by books, an empty teacup, unfortunately, because I drank it all. (laughs) And I am just so excited to be back. Uh, So many of you, I just came back from a 10-day speaking trip in California uh, with Wild and Free, another church that I spoke in, got to see wonderful friends. Oh my goodness, I I just uh, am so excited to encourage you today. This is the perfect time of year to uh, do it up a little bit differently. Um, Think of one person that you know that needs encouragement or a cup of tea, one, just one cup, or a little card or a plate of something wonderful that you baked because there are so many people who minister to me. There were people who brought me sweet treasures that I have home at home with me now, cards, and just mainly uh, because many of us have been together for many years uh, speaking together, uh, just the, the sweetness that you didn't know you needed, but when you're with somebody and they, they love you and encourage you, you think, wow, I, I did need that, and I didn't even know it because I'm so used to going on my own, working hard, uh, having a somewhat isolated life, and here you realize that the way that you feel God's love the most is when people reach out to you. So all that to say, I had a great trip. uh, And by the time I got home, uh, I think I slept in numerous beds and met literally a thousand people. (laughs) And so now I'm home sitting on my crowded couch with books galore. And I have so many fun things to tell you about today. Uh, I am, this weekend, I'm going into, I don't usually have so many things scheduled right together, but this week I do. And so I'm in the midst of preparing right now uh, to speak at Glenary Castle, which is a beautiful place. It's the Navigator's Headquarters on these gorgeous mountainous grounds, and they have um, this, the the, uh, Palmer Um, built it. He was somebody who came to Colorado Springs to try to bring all the wealth and all the uh, sophistication from the East Coast. He settled here. He built a castle for his wife and his daughter. And that's what became the headquarters for Glen Erie. If you ever come here, you must go there and hike around in uh, in the beautiful grounds and go have, they have a, a high tea there and they have a bookstore and they have cafes. And anyway, I get to go speak there about writing. And of course, after writing 31 books, um, I think, do I have anything to say? (laughs) Do you ever do that? Uh, I know Sarah, my daughter, who has read more books than anyone I know, um, when somebody came up to her and said, Sarah, can you recommend a book to me? And she said the immediate thought of her introverted heart, which is what happens to me, was have I ever read a book? <laughs> so anyway, I um, hope that some of you know what the imposter syndrome is. Uh, many times we all feel like, I'm, I'm just posing. Surely I'm not really accomplishing what I think I am. So anyway, if you have the imposter syndrome, I am right there with you. But anyway, I, I, have, some, I have a really fun surprise for you at the end of today. But uh, I also have Clay's birthday on May 2nd. And we will be right in the middle of the conference. So if anybody feels like um, saying happy birthday or uh, I love one of your books because he is the best writer I know. I I was mentioning yesterday Heartfelt Discipline. I need to mention that more. It is a life-changing book about reaching the heart of your children, not just trying to manipulate their behavior. And uh, it's biblical. It's wonderful. So For his birthday, if you mention one of his books or the 24 Family Ways or Educating the Wholehearted Child or whatever, I think that would mean a lot to him. Anyway, thank you that I can impose myself upon you all. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, so um, a couple of things this week. I I was in one of my friend's houses for a couple of days, and she reminded me of something that I used to do a long time ago. I was at um, 
I was at her home, and she had the cutest, darlingest little small vase that was stuffed with greenery, and it looked gorgeous. So it just happened that I was at my Whole Foods grocery store yesterday. All my flowers had died while I was gone. And so I got these big, tall, thick, beautiful greens. They're, they're these beautiful, shiny leaves, and they were on half price. So how could I resist? So I bought this big bouquet. Actually, it was just like, you know, as long as branches, I would say mm, two and a half feet tall. And I came and cut the ends of them off, and I have it in my brass. Um, I have this beautiful brass vase that I got at my um, market in Oxford for almost nothing. And I'm looking at my greens, and I thought, I need to tell people they should put beautiful greens in their vases sometimes because they will last for almost a month. And, and they look beautiful, and you don't have to do anything. So I wanted to tell you about that. Um, for Clay's birthday, uh, we always, in our birthdays, if you've read The Life-Giving Home or The Life-Giving Table, you know that we get up, we have homemade cinnamon rolls this time, um, this wonderful bakery made cinnamon rolls for me. <laughs> and so we will have cinnamon rolls and my um, famous cheesy eggs, and uh, we will celebrate his birthday here at home for a little bit. And I'm so grateful for him. You know, the older you get, I think when you're young, you do focus a lot on romance and what he said and how he treated me, and hopefully those things will always matter. But now I look at Clay and I go, oh my gosh, he paid my taxes. He, uh, he's dealing with the gophers and with the woodpeckers that we have an infestation of. Clay decided that there's a whole school of birds that just decided that they would meet and knock on our um, siding and pull out all of um, the, the inner workings, of <laughs> uh, the, uh, the little um, stuff that protects us the insulation, um, and we have yellow insulation all over our yard. And I'm so grateful. I think I have a husband who goes out and picks up all of the insulation that these birds have drilled out, this whole school, this whole flock of mini birds. We have tried many things to get rid of woodpeckers. So um, we have wood siding in our home, and they just adore it. So let me know about that. But I, I realized that in the long haul, I am so grateful that Clay has been so kind to put up with me and let me get mature over a lifetime. <laughs> I certainly wasn't when we first got married. So anyway, um, I just wanted to mention that to you. And also, uh, I, I have a little something I wanted to read to you. I'm, gonna, I'm ending with a really fun surprise today. But one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, if you still lack something to give to someone for Mother's Day, or if you want to ask for something, I'm going to tell you that there are two of my books that I really hope you will consider because my whole legacy of my whole life, I, many of you know that I started out in student ministry and then I went to executive ministry, worked with professional um, business people and, and working people. And then uh, I lived in um, Eastern Europe, mentoring, discipling, building up people, teaching them the word, teaching them to love um, God and, and leaving with them a legacy of his light and beauty and love. And then I applied that to family. I, I thought everything I've learned about leadership, about mentoring, about discipleship, about Jesus being a servant leader, Jesus walking, washing feet, Jesus instructing, Jesus being patient, Jesus affirming um, through his words, his disciples— I wanted to pass that on to a generation of parents to say, your work is the most important kingdom work you'll ever do because you are shaping the destinies, the hearts, the souls, the minds of people who will become adults and hopefully leave a legacy of faith to the next generation as well. And so the books that I think, and you can uh, all of my books are a part of our outreach as a ministry, as Whole Heart Ministries. Um, it's, we're, we're still cooking. Clay and I are more excited probably now than ever to say, how can we so impact the world with the messages that are in the heart of Christ that children will be redeemed, become excellent, become impassioned for 
um, the holiness of God and go into the world to bring his light and beauty and love. We are still thinking about that. So I wrote, there's this beautiful new version, as many of you know, and it's at Target now, which is a great accomplishment. There's my new book called Mom Heart Moments. It is actually, of course, a hardback and a, a beautiful um, with gold um, leaf on the front of it, teapots and teacups, and it has a little marker in it. But it's they put it in that form because they wanted people to be able to keep it for a lifetime and give it to other people, and it's going to last forever, and um, or at least for a long time, because everybody told me they were using the other book so much that um, the paperbacks were falling apart because they used it for several years now. So Mom Heart Moments is a devotional. I thought, you know, I want to put together a 365-day devotional that women can just come for five or ten minutes and, and get some scripture or some admonition about motherhood or some encouragement that they could hold with them the rest of the day because as your heart goes, so the whole day goes. So Mom Heart Moments is a beautiful book that you might give to someone. But I'm going to end on Tea Time Discipleship today because uh, I, I met so many women at the conferences and I get so many letters all the time from people who are lonely and isolated or they're bearing um, sick children or their husband left them or they had a car wreck or whatever, or just they're exhausted and they've been dealing with these sweet, sinful children in their home who fuss and who want to wear relatively clean clothes and who want to eat all the time, and um, which becomes exhausting for us as moms. I think part of the difficulty is that this commitment that we have, that we have given our lives to, number one, we haven't totally been trained for it. Number two, we have mysterious children. And, and number three, it is a marathon. It is not just a short-term thing. And so Tea Time Discipleship is my book where I wanted to inspire a whole generation of women to reach out, to, to form bonds with people that can encourage one another, to say to someone, um, could you come over to my house and, uh, and we'll just have a cup of tea and be friends? Or how are you doing? Can I make a meal for you? Or I just want you to know I prayed for you today and I have a little card to give to you. Because I think that once we feel known and seen, uh, I was talking to one of my kids today on the phone, and they said, you know, I think everybody in the world needs me right now. And um, and I, I, I sometimes feel the same way, don't we all? <clears throat> and this child said, I feel like I am giving, I'm encouraging, I'm working hard to make enough money to live on. I'm also um, try, trying to reach out to other people and do their favors for them. And so I spent my my time on FaceTime, encouraging, loving, saying what I really uh, love about them, how proud I am of them, how much their heart of thanksgiving and so on means. That's what Tea Time Discipleship is about. It's about beauty. It's one of the most beautiful books I've ever been able to have the privilege of writing. It has pictures from my house and recipes, and but it has stories about how even way long ago, uh, I lived in uh, Eastern Europe, in Poland, and we would sneak girls into our home, literally sneak, because we weren't allowed together for Bible studies. And we would have sometimes 30 women there, and we would make herbate, this tea, and we would serve them tea. Um, they, they just drank their tea with sugar. It was in these little glasses with little metal handles so that you wouldn't burn your hand. And then we would make big loaves, or we would buy big loaves of bread at the store, and we would put butter and jam and because there wasn't a lot of food in the stores. And then we would talk to them about how much God loved them, how much God had designed each of them to tell a great story in the towns that they came from. People would come from different towns all over Poland, and then they would go back and teach what we had taught them. And so Tea Time Discipleship is uh, about sharing faith one cup of tea at a time, sharing encouragement. And so that would be a great book this time of year for those of you who don't have it. Or if you can give it to another friend and say, let's, let's start a group of women, of like-minded women who need one another. And let me just tell you, if you feel like your house isn't clean enough, it is. It's fine. I have somebody who called me who said that they're coming to the Writers' Conference, and could they come 
to my house a little bit early from the airport, and then um, we would take them, because they're from out of state, and we would take them down to Glen Erie, where we're going. And I'm telling you, I was looking around at my house. Um, there is dust uh, different places. There are little, it looks like somebody came to my kitchen in the past few days and sprinkled crumbs on the floor everywhere around my kitchen. And um, I was just, this, this person in, is in my mind a perfect person. And, uh, you know, we do this to ourselves, don't we? And so I realized that, no, I want this person to know that I am so happy that they're going to be here that I'm going to reach out to them in hospitality and say, I'm so glad you could come and just assume that they also have a house that goes from chaos to order, chaos to order, chaos to order. It's about focusing on the heart, the needs, the, um, just the, the person, the, the person that's in your life. It can be a dear friend. It can be somebody who needs a friend, but uh, just one cup of tea for someone. I want all of you all just to think one cup of tea or coffee or lemonade or Coke or whatever. Just one cup. Give one cup and a sweet 10 minutes of focus on somebody that you love a lot that might benefit greatly from your words. So anyway, I thought that'd be fun. And I wanted to read to you this. Somebody uh, sent this to me, which I think is so wonderful. And it's, it's by Anonymous. So when the world is all at odds, and the mind is all at sea, then cease the useless tedium and brew a cup of tea. There is magic in its fragrance. There is solace in its taste. And then laden moments vanish somehow into space. And the world becomes a lovely thing. There's beauty, as you'll see, all because you briefly stopped to brew a cup of tea. So, my friends, happy cup of tea to you this week. Happy cup of tea to you and whoever, a a child, a husband, a friend, a colleague, whoever you can say, I made this for you. I appreciate you. I'm so glad we're friends. I want to get to know you better. How are you? How can I pray for you? You accompany your cup of tea with a bit of love and a bit of sweetness, and then that'll be great. Well, it ends up today, I've got so many more things to tell you, Um, But I I wanted to talk to you today. As you know, I've been going through some of the attributes in the 24 family ways, uh, just because I think the more you understand the character uh, quality that God is looking for in us or the character quality that we find in Christ, the more you're able to unpack and open up for your children a story or the beauty of the words that we're talking about. So today, I'm actually going to be jumping off. I'm not, again, I already have podcasts that went through the 24 Family Ways, and um, you can go back to those, but I'm trying to elucidate the, the character qualities that we need to know. So the way that we're working from today is our Family Way number 11. Um, it says concerning possessions, but I'm going to broaden that in a moment. It says we are generous with what we have, sharing freely with others. We are generous with what we have, sharing freely with others. And um, the commentary, uh, I'm sorry, the scripture is 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. And it says, Each one must do just as he has proposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I was thinking about this today, and actually I have um, some wonderful things to share with you, but um, I was thinking about if I can find this um, place. But what is generosity? It's the quality of giving an abundance, uh, giving plentifulness, giving copiously, giving an amplitude, giving profusely, liberally, lavishly, magnanimously, um, Uh, just giving all that you have to bless another person. And I was thinking that it's really easy to think of generosity as something to do with money, but I was thinking that the most important treasures that we have that I want to talk with you about today are we have time. We We have plenty of time in a lifetime. Usually, most of us have 
um, decades of lifetime. We have time that we can give to someone. And there are people right now in my life and in your life who need our time, our attention, and our love. I met with someone last week that I didn't know very well. And when she poured out her heart to me, I, I just had so much compassion. I thought I should have been more generous with my time when I would see her here and there before. And I want to make time for people in my life. I want to be generous. I want to bless them so much with my time that they will, um, that they will say, I needed a friend and you have come along beside me to be my friend. Um, another thing that we have to give is we have words to give. I've been so aware of this. I've been talking about it a lot lately. I talked about giving your words at um, the Wild and Free because words are those things that give life. They create worlds. They cause somebody to develop a sense of self. Uh, they, they create imagination. Um, we gave our children lots of words because we wanted them to imagine the artist God who threw into place all of these gorgeous bushes that are flowering. Uh, when I was in Oxford, uh, the sunrises, the sunsets, the um, the, even though they bug me to death, there are this whole herd of beautiful deer that run through my yard. Thank goodness I don't have any flowers yet because they haven't eaten any. <laughs> but um, God has his whole heart when he created the world to give to Adam and Eve. He was generous in creating a place that had plants and flowers and trees and animals and food and color and diversity and pleasure and he created us to be dancers and singers and laughers, and God was abundantly generous. And when we tap into that generosity, uh, we become like God. And, and so that's why sometimes I do emphasize a lot um, the life-giving home or the beauty, the, the places that we can make in our home that reflect what God is like. God is a God of color and light and dimension and taste and sound and and laughter and joy. And when we fill our places with his attributes, when we generously give um, to sacrifice in such a way that others will come into the presence of the creator, the artist, the king, the lover, the shepherd, when they're in our home, when we give generously, we are acting like God when he created this incredible world for our pleasure. But uh, so I, I wanted to do that in my home with the beauty, but I wanted to do it with words. Um, I think sometimes, like I said, when I was in um, California, I didn't know how much I needed words. I needed encouragement. I needed to know that some of my work had mattered. I, was go I went there tired because I've been working a lot and helping some people lately. Um, I gave words to uh, my child today, uh, words to, to hold on to, words to define their sense of self, words that you are a person of integrity, you are a person that gives, you are a person who is grateful. Um, and I, I gave words of instruction. I, I've been telling, I still, uh, I bribe my children with food or money, <laughs> you know, like here's a $5 Starbucks card, go have fun, whatever. Um, I should be more generous, shouldn't I? But um, I try to still mentor my children with words I try to say, you know, when I see your life and the faithfulness of you every day, I know you're exhausted and you give and give and give. And not only that, you love and love and love. I am so honored to be your mom. Or I know that this job didn't work out and I'm so sorry, but I know because God has been faithful to our family and you, are, you have prayed, you are walking faithfully. I know that in God's timing, a, a good job will come along. I've had my children in and out of jobs lately, um, and all of them need to know that there is a future with a hope, that they will be able to pay their bills. <laughs> my kids are doing fine, but they're all in transition right now. Um, but be generous with your words. Don't withhold your words. If you love someone or somebody has done anything that you appreciate, uh, or if you've seen an attribute that is a special attribute of theirs, be generous with your words. Now, finally, the ultimate thing is Jesus was the ultimate giver of himself without thought or regard to his own self. 
He gave, he served, he washed feet, as I always say. He came that we might have life, that we might have it abundantly. He said, I am humble and meek. He said, don't be afraid of me. I am gentle and kind. I want to love you. And then he gave ultimately himself that we might be healed of, of, of the darkness of our sin. He gave that the world could be redeemed. He's making a new world even more beautiful than the one to begin with. The ultimate picture of generosity is this loving, creative, sacrificial, compassionate, sympathetic God who gave all that he was that we could know him and live with him in eternity in his kingdom forever. So my friends, as you're thinking about this word this week, ask God, don't, don't give grudgingly. And don't give just to people who can give back to you. Perhaps there's somebody in your life who's poor, somebody in your life, or maybe somebody that you want to support overseas, or maybe there is a cause you want to give to. Uh, maybe there is a child that needs a little sussy, a surprise. Um, g- g- surprise them. Get them a little gift and put it under their pillow or on top of their pillow with a card. Uh, take someone out. Um, make yourself your own little party. Maybe you need generosity towards yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. God is so generous. I, I think I've told you in the past few weeks that one of the things I'm doing is I am praying on my knees because it keeps me awake and focused because I can be really easily distracted. But another thing I've gotten back in the habit of doing, and in light of the fact that we've studied this the past couple of weeks in my podcast, is to be um, content and to be grateful. So before I get out of the bed in the morning, I try to think of three to five things that I can thank God for. I, I have a bed. I have a warm bed. Uh, I have food. I have uh, these uh, precious children. I have clay. I have, you know, I just try to thank God. Be generous in your gratefulness to God. Well, my friends, I want to pray for you because I know that Uh, Many of you are working from an exhausted place, and I'm just going to pray that you that you get refreshed and that you take care of yourself so that you can last longer. But what I really want you to know is that I have a really, really fun surprise today, and it's going to be somebody that you know, and I'm about to get off of this uh, podcast right now so that I can go to tell you about this friend. And um, I wanted to pray for you first, though, because It is so delightful for me that I get to be here with you. Oh, and also, I'm so sorry, one more thing before I pray for you. Um, We are still doing the book study, a very short book study, but on Tea Time Discipleship. And one of my assistants told me that this book is really encouraging and ministering to her because of some of the stories that are real live people who um, became dear friends because... We created a group where we could be together, share a cup of tea, and and then um, love each other our whole lives. And so uh, you'll be able to have a little tiny, if you're in the membership, um, lifewithsally.com. And I will do a little video for you that you'll be able to see this week. And um, you'll be able to be encouraged. We have a new um, Bible study for you, a new journal. And... Um, we, have, we love doing our book studies together, so be sure to join Life with Sally. You can always go back to the lessons from the time before, and um, it, it will put you on our mailing list for all of the conferences where I'll be speaking and the places that we're going to be doing things. And yes, I will try to have member meetups wherever I go. If there are members in town, I will try to arrange at least an hour to have a member meetup with you. And we have a lot more planned for our uh, membership this year because we just want to continue thinking of new ways to inspire and encourage you. Thank you for everyone who has joined our membership. It literally pays for our staff, for um, our office, for uh, our different uh, projects that we do, for all the accounting that we have to pay for. (laughs) We, We aren't smart enough to do all the accounting from all the things that we do. Um, So thank you for supporting our ministry by being a part of Life with Sally. And we welcome anybody else who wants to come. And that's where the Mission of Motherhood book study is, which that's what I was starting to say to begin with. Let me pray for you. Dear God, I I feel so blessed that 
as I look back in my life, uh, my goodness, I get to be a part of a great arena of people who are um, idealistic, who are loving, who want to please you, who maybe are just getting to know you now. Lord, a group of people who care to make a difference in their world. And Lord, they work hard. And you know that life is mysterious and children are mysterious and and uh, jobs and houses and um, friends and work is mysterious. But you've called us, Lord, to be those who get to know you and can be thankful to you and can be contented, as we've been talking about, the gift of contentment, the gift of learning to be satisfied, the, li- the gift of learning to be grateful. Lord, give my precious friends the ability to put aside uh, the complaints that we all have. We all are lamenters, just like the psalmist. And yet, Lord, we do have you. We have truth. We know your strength. We know your presence, your companionship every day. Bless my friends with a sense of your companionship. And Lord, turn their hearts um, to understanding what it means to be generous in every area of their lives, generous in love, in words, in serving, in creating beauty, in teaching, in just living in this world where we can see your fingerprints everywhere when we look. Bless us to be people that other people might glean your light from as we initiate Um, to them, as we love them, as we start our groups, as we befriend them, as we take care of our children because of your generosity in giving us this beautiful world and giving us your words and giving us yourself. Give us a generous heart, I pray, Lord, and cause us to have peace as we walk this week with you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, stay tuned. You're going to hear somebody who's going to be my friend with me in just a moment. Well, my friends, I told you I had a wonderful surprise for you today, and you're going to love my friend because you already know her well. But I, uh, I'm i having Sarah McKenzie on to talk with us a few minutes about her new book. Hi, Sarah. Oh, my goodness, Sally. I love talking with you. Thank you so much for inviting me to come chat with you today. Well, it's so funny. Um, this is not what you're supposed to do in life. You're not <laughs> supposed to write your friend and say, could you podcast with me in 10 minutes because I really want to promote your book. <laughs> and so Sarah, who has an assistant and everybody else who you know does it all formally, said, yes, I will. <laughs> so we are here because we're both so excited about her new book. I was sitting on my couch here in Colorado, and um, the uh, UPS guy came to the door, and I thought, I'm not expecting anything. Open the most beautiful book in the world. It's called Because Barbara. And Sarah, I can't wait for you to tell our friends about it because I neglected to mention a book of the week, which I always do on Tea Time Tuesday, because I wanted to talk about your new book. It's so beautiful. And your subject is about one of my favorite people in the whole world. Okay. So Barbara Cooney, uh, your listeners are going to know her books from like Miss Rumpheus, Oxcart yes. Man, Roxa Boxen, mm-hmm. Shanta Claire and the Fox. She was my favorite illustrator. I mean, she's got kind of that iconic style where once you fall in love with her illustrations, if you see a book by her, you're like, oh, it just grabs you. So I loved, especially Miss Rumpheus was my, has always been my favorite. Of course. And uh, I started digging into a little bit more about Barbara Cooney, the person. Just I actually wanted to do a podcast episode on her life. And so I interviewed her son, who's now in his 70s. Um, and he, the more I got to know about Barbara as like a woman and a mother, the more I was like, oh my goodness, she had four children. She was wow. married to a town doctor. He was huh. gone a lot working and she was like this very prolific illustrator. She illustrated, I can't remember now how many books I think it says in there somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember oh. over a hundred to maybe 200. Oh something my there. goodness. Wow. Yeah. And yet her son, when he remembers her, he talks about her like, he would say, you know, it didn't matter if we came in with like a lizard or a skin knee or uh, whatever we brought in from the outside. She would always stop what she was doing. She'd set up her illustrative or her illustration table in the busiest room in the house. And she would oh. always put her things down and look at us in the face. And, and then he would tell me stories about how she would take them out to look at different lichen and go on these picnics. She was like the ultimate Charlotte Mason mom before. She probably had never heard the name Charlotte Mason. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was uh, actually uh, the mom that God made her to be. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it was such, so beautiful. And I was so inspired by 
not just the way Barnaby remembered her, but also I started reading some of her award speeches from when she won a couple of Caldecott awards. Mm -hmm. And she would talk about how really what she was trying to do in her books was she would just, there's this beautiful quote. uh, I can't remember it now off the top of my head, but it's like, she would say, what I'm saying with my books is, do you see how beautiful this is? Did you notice how amazing that is? She's like, look around the world and see this beautiful world. And she wanted to, yeah. And so I, a woman after both of our own hearts. Oh my gosh. I've always loved her. And Miss Rimpius, Joy even got a t-shirt in Maine this year. Oh, um, Oh, that says yes. Miss Rimpius on it and a bag, I think, that had Miss Rimpius on it. <laughs> of course, Joy did. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so then I wrote this picture book biography, and this was so fun because we um, were publishing at our, our new, we have a new boutique. Now it's a new award-winning boutique publishing house. Yay. Three, three, three awards, three gold three awards. Three gold awards from the Ben Franklin oh. Independent Book Publishers Association. So very fun. Um we hired Eileen Ryan Ewan to make the illustrations. She flew out to Damariscotta, Maine, sat at a table with Barnaby. He showed her oh. all these photo albums. And oh one of goodness. the things that's so cool that I did not know about Barbara's books is that she was super attentive to detail. So, for example, she uh, wrote and illustrated a picture book biography called Eleanor about Eleanor Roosevelt. Really? And in that book, there's an illustration of Eleanor Roosevelt as a baby in her christening gown. Wow. And the gown is exactly true to detail. Like the lace pattern, everything is exactly true. Wow. And so Barbara would like travel. If she was going to uh, illustrate a book that was set in Appalachian Mountains, she would go there. Or if she was going to Greece, she would go there. Spain, she would go there. She would just travel and she would want wanted to get accurate um, things that she saw in the world onto the page. So to honor that, Eileen, when she made the illustrations for this book, she was sitting in Barbara's house and looking at her illustrations and trying to get as much of Barbara's real really? life. So your book. illustrator went yeah. to, her, uh, Barnaby is her son, the 70 year old, right? Son. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and did the detail work on what she saw. Oh my goodness. And mm-hmm. I have to say, I haven't gotten it read it yet because I just got it. In the, yeah. <laughs> maybe you can listen. But I did flip back and I see you even have some original pictures. Yes. He gave us pictures that we could put in there. It was amazing. He's been amazing. I dedicated the book to Barnaby and his wife, Susan. Susan was a very, very good friend of Bar- uh, Barbara's and they have the best stories and um, they were, they're just absolutely delightful. So it was really fun too, to hear all the different like facets of Barbara. Barnaby was like telling me stories about her garden. She always grew all these different varieties of tomatoes. And then you know, she was an av- voracious reader and she ended up, um, one of her last things she did before she passed away in her eighties was, um, build a, she raised $850,000 for a new library in her town in Damariscotta, Maine oh by goodness. having all these famous illustrators, um, donate their illustrations, do original illustrations that they donated at an auction. So she was just like, what struck me about her is uh-huh. that she was very determined like to make the world more beautiful. And then she would just like figure out how to do it, but she did it with her kids in tow. And I just love that so much. Well, I do too. And you know, I, two words I've been using a lot this year and I see you as a a pinnacle of this, but um, our agency, we all have the ability to decide to work harder, to muscle up, to, to put ourselves out there more, to love people more, to, you know, be servant leaders, to, be with our kids, to look them in the face, to use our talents. And she's such a picture of that, but she yeah. did it with grace. And mm-hmm. then, the, you know, we, we have, um, we all have capacity for different things. We all have capacity for our different stewardships. And I just think this is going to be the best book because Barbara, my friends, and um, it's by my precious friend, Sarah, Sarah McKenzie. I, you know, I did this all backwards. I needed to say Sarah McKenzie loves books Almost as much as Clarkson's, maybe even more. <laughs> but we both love children's books. You have changed people's lives all over the world, giving them an open door to understanding what are the best books. Mm. Um, we've been kindred spirits for years, and I didn't even tell everybody all the things. So quickly tell everybody just a little bit about you, because I should have done that to begin with. Oh, and no. I want to be sure that everybody gets this book. And also gets to find where they can find you and all the other wonderful things you're doing. 
Oh, thank you, Sally. My husband, Andrew, and I live in the Pacific Northwest with our six kids who we homeschool um, and have been very inspired, of course, by your work, Sally, for years mm-hmm. and years and years, way before um, before I'd ever even written my first word online. I was I was being schooled by your wholehearted education ideas. Oh. So, um, and really, I think a huge reason I love books so much is because of what you taught in the whole heart oh, education yes. and you know, other bookish moms like Elizabeth Foss, who was also, I, I know really yeah. acted by you. Um, and now I host the read aloud revival podcast. And um, that's a place where we help kids fall in love with books and moms fall in love with homeschooling. And, um, and then this new publishing house where we're making read alouds. Our goal there is to make really beautiful read alouds that are great for a wide range of ages because I know that's what I've needed and a lot of read aloud revival families need is books that they can read aloud with their four-year-old and their 14-year-old in the room. That exactly, is which is what we everybody. both did with our kids who are now doing just fine in adult life. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yes. So the book is called Because Barbara, and it, it's you can find it anywhere books are sold. You can buy it from your local bookstore or online, or you can go to waxwingbooks.com to find it. It's available to pre-order now, and we are just a little baby a publishing house. And so if I can make a little humble appeal to pre-order, um, if you're interested in Because Barbara, it makes such a huge difference. And right now we're trying to grow this publishing house so we can make more read-alouds for families. So we appreciate every single one. I'm so glad. Well, I'm glad that you jumped on with me today. I, I really wanted Anytime. to talk this book today. <laughs> and um, thank you for being so patient with me. We have wanted to get together for a long time, and then I kept leaving the country. Um, and Or you would be gone and, uh, doing something. So thank you so much for being with me today. Bless you. Bless your family. Um, our girls are both going to be in Scotland this yes. year. There's yes. so many things that we need to talk about. But I hope that um, I hope that many of my friends will already know you, but will discover you and discover your wonderful books. So thank you so much for joining me today, Sarah. Sally, thank you, thank you. And anytime you want to hop on in ten minutes, I'm there. <laughs> oh, good. I know. I was just. I thought she'll do this. I know she will. She's my friend. <laughs> so anytime. all right, friend. I'll talk to you later. And thanks um, a lot for this beautiful new book. Can't wait to read it after dinner. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you'll join me next week. Be sure to look for more inspiration on my blog at sallyclarkson.com. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.